uh, hey man, can I be on your team? Huh? Yeah? What's up guys? Back with a little bit of commentary today. Kind of walking through my thought process. Uh, what I felt I did right and what I felt I did wrong. Uh, but before we get into that, I just want to say that this is kind of an old clip. It's from about two weeks ago, but it's one of the last clips that I will uh, highlight me playing with Rogue Company. The Monday prior to the published date of this video, I actually voluntarily turned in my patch for Rogue Company. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail, but let's just say that the team wasn't moving in the direction that I would hope they would have. Um, but at the end of the day, I hope everybody understands that you don't need a team to airsoft. Moving forward, uh, it was a force on force playing corner to corner, and uh, it was Row Company and a couple other players, so we were pretty stacked. Uh, the couple of the players ended up being Dove and his boy Casey. They're both badass motherfuckers. They're both super tactical, and I love playing with them. I cannot stand this bus in the middle of the map, or, or at least where it's at. Since the map is segregated uh, with the ref tower being in the middle of the field and the bus right past it, when you start off on this side of the map playing north, south, corners, whatever, uh, it's just in the way, man. It's just, it just, it really gives the other team an advantage to kind of control the center of the map or at least control the houses because they can get in there without you seeing them or they can actually get inside of the bus and be annoying and shoot out of it. Uh, hey bro, where are you going? Nope. Uh, three of my teammates that went left looked like they died. That's how this guy got here so far. After rewatching, I wish I would have pushed a little bit farther, but I didn't. I got really caught up on this uh, barrier here, which really didn't give me any uh, angles or advantages against the other team. Uh, through hearing all the fire and everything in the moment, I could tell that the team really got aggressive and they just came hard all the way to our right and towards the center. Um, so I'm kind of stuck here and just kind of waiting for them to get aggressive. So I caught that one player off guard. I call for Andy, my teammates. I kind of let them know they're behind us. They start to kind of uh, pull back a little bit, and it just gets worse from here on out. People start dying. Uh, you know, players are taken out, and I'm kind of windling down to one of the last guys here. So I just want to point out that even though a team is tactical and does work well together that uh, and it does seem kind of stacked on one side doesn't mean they're always going to win. People mistakes and those little mistakes add up really fast. One of my mistakes is I put myself in a really stupid spot uh, behind a stupid barrier and just end up staring at my teammates all game. So at this point, it starts going through my head that I am stuck in the middle of the field. I have enemies to my back. I have very few friendlies to my front, and I start to uh, realize that I need to I need to start moving. As I realize this, uh, the frustrations of airsoft uh, really shine through right here. I take a shot at a player in the at the, uh, at the sniper tower in a second, and then another player uh, back in the house. So for an indoor CQB environment, this is really why I recommend a uh, any type of light on your weapon system. Uh, it really helps out because for me, I run a pistol and I really what? use the light as suppression. I always don't need to put BBs on range. I can kind of just uh, intimidate players by shining my light. So after suppressing the player at the sniper tower, I decide I need to move because I am stuck at that stupid barrier in the open. I stack up on the next barrier. As I turn around to check my six, I, I see a player in the house. Now I'm in a predicament. I took two confident shots at both of them, and like I said, the frustrations of airsoft really shine through. So now I'm stuck suppressing both of them, and my choices are I either take one player and move to their spot, or I just get out of there. So I decided to book it into the house to the left. Because I suppressed both players, there's really no communication amongst them, so I'm kind of confident that I can get away. I book it into this house. So now, going through my head, I have two choices. I either stand my ground, or I leave the area and look for some teammates and regroup. I decide to hold, and with my awareness of where the last two players were, the only two possible ways they can come get me is through this window and through this door. Uh, they either follow me and get surrendered around this barrier, or they wrap around the house and get shot through the door or the window. Now remember, these are all my opinions and views. There's no professional training behind it. This is just what's going through my head. At this point, I know there's three enemies. The two that I saw, and I can hear one communicating with one of the enemies at the sniper tower. He hears pistol shots and is really trying to figure out what's going on. I decide to get confident and catch them off guard as they're communicating. So I check my angles out this window and through the original door I came through. In my peripheral, I see a player through the door, and I take a couple shots at him. I actually hit him. That's a player from the sniper tower. Uh, and then I re-angle myself to try to catch another player off guard if they end up stacking up together. So now, I decide to move. 
Here's where I make another mistake. I build a lot of confidence after taking the contact down from the sniper tower, so I decide to take the second enemy that I saw. Uh, so as I'm wrapping around the house to take the second enemy, uh, instead of trusting my instincts, I actually just go with what I visually saw. In between the houses, I see a light flash, and like a fish or like a kitten, I decide to follow the light uh, instead of just clearing that house and then wrapping back around. But I put myself by it right back in the middle of the enemies. I turn the corner, I surrender a kid, I keep moving, and I get surrendered by another player. So, did a lot of things uh, wrong and did a few things right. Hope you guys enjoyed.